Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, September the 1st, Unenjoyment Friday, the day we've all kind of been waiting for. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having that all out of the way, this is the day we've kind of been waiting for. This is the day of the week that we've, we're going to be getting all of the data, it seems like. Remember, earlier on in the week, we just weren't getting a whole lot of data. One of the things, though, about Fridays is that it is a rush to the Hamptons, especially on uh, today where we're having an extended weekend. I'm sure that the volumes are really going to start slowing down. And that's probably a, one of the reasons why the overall uh, markets aren't really acting as we would expect. Uh, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail after we go through all the economic data. Uh, so across the pond, we've got Spanish manufacturing PMI coming in sl slightly lower than expected at 52.4, expected to be 54.4. Remember, PMI is Purchasing Managers Index. That's for the manufacturing side. That means the, the gentlemen or ladies that are uh, in charge of buying the inputs into the manufacturing sector are the ones that are putting this number out. So this is the purchasing managers. So that's really important because it's forward looking. It's kind of like they see what uh, the demand is coming in and they are uh, purchasing different uh, supplies in order to ramp up manufacturing or pull back on manufacturing. And on the Spanish side, it seems that they're pulling back a little bit. Then on the Italian aspect, uh, manufacturing PMI came in, coming in at 56.3. One tick higher than expected at 55.3. Uh, French final manufacturing PMI in line with expectations, 55.8. German final manufacturing in line again with expectations at 59.3. And the general overall European region final manufacturing PMI in line with expectations at 57.4. Uh, and then um, Great Britain's manufacturing PMI coming in at 56.9, expected to be 55, so better than expected for Great Britain. Here in the United States, we got our own uh, final manufacturing PMI numbers, and it comes in the form of ISM, which is the Institute for Supply Management. Remember, we talk about theirs as their most important ones are the flash uh, PMIs and we didn't get those flash PMIs in those previous numbers that I talked about. But here in the United States, we talk about the ISM, which is the Institute for Supply Management for the uh, Purchasing Managers Index, coming in at 58.8, expected to be 56.5. So a lot better than expected there. Uh, but on the flip side, we got our unemployment claims, which is the non-farm payroll. This is the big number of the year. It comes out on the first Friday of every month and it is a key indicator as to uh, the robustness of the overall economy. Today, coming in at 156,000 hires, expected to be 180,000 hires, and on top of that, we got a revision down uh, from last month. It, came, it was supposed to be, uh, or it came in last month at 209,000 hires. It came in at 189,000 hires, so 20,000 less than, uh, than previously reported there, and then, you know, another uh, 24,000 revised or uh, lower than expected this month. So quite a few uh, hires uh, not really added into the overall economy that we thought were going to be. And then, you know, on that, we have unemployment rate upticking to 4.4% from the 4.3% expected. All right, and then uh, finally, we got University of Michigan consumer sentiment coming in slightly lower than expected at 96.8, expected to be 97.4. So uh, that a little bit lower there. And then construction spending almost 
a nine month low coming in at a negative 0.6% was expected to be a positive 0.5%. And then the ISM Institute for Supply Management prices paid coming in right in line with expectations at 62. All right, so now that we got all that out of the way, one last thing is we have vehicle sales throughout the day. And uh, from the first ones that I've seen are not doing so well, but uh, with Hurricane Harvey, it seems like those vehicle sales will probably start to ramp up just because there's so many uh, cars. I think they said a half a million cars that are gonna have to be scrapped, so. All right, on to the overall markets. Here we got crude oil, uh, slightly in negative territory by about a quarter, and testing that 50 Fibonacci level that we've been talking so much about, uh, that is going to act as a major resistance as it did yesterday, popped above that, but then uh, settled below. Uh, today we aren't really able to get above that really with any kind of robust or gusto, I guess I should say. And it really looks like this is just downtrending as it's acting as support on this trend line uh, it you know will act as resistance once it gets in there it's going to act as support and bounce along that on the way down uh, and very very much looking like it is um, you know just in a downward spiral despite the fact that I think that uh, we should be a little bit more or the market should be a little bit more bullish on crude oil with everything that's going on so um, not necessarily the case though uh, and with gold futures popping higher today by about seven dollars uh, don't really have a whole lot to say about this other than there's probably a lot of shorts in there that are really kind of struggling to get out anytime you get above this value area high uh, you start seeing those shorts really start to cover and that's I think what we're really seeing right now uh, with the gold popping into uh, above I should say the uh, you know above the value area high and well into the 1300s now uh, on to the bonds bonds were down over a point today or just slightly over a point full point there and now only down about a half point being down 16 ticks on the day uh, and then on to the overall equities we've got Dow Jones up 62 points let's call it give or take and uh, doing very well on that aspect, despite the fact that we saw that bad unemployment number. I think that people are kind of hanging their hat on the ISM uh, numbers because that's more forward looking, whereas the payrolls number is more of a lagging indicator in a sense because those are the things that have already happened. This manufacturing PMI from the Institute for Supply and Management is forward looking, remember, because that's what the manufacturing sector is expecting to do. Uh, onto the NASDAQ, we got a, uh, another new all time historical high uh, for the NASDAQ above 6,000. Not there yet, but you know, that is a big uh, number above 6,000. And if they can settle up there, that's going to really make this market look like it wants to really start rocking and rolling to the upside. Uh, we've got the E-mini S&Ps up seven points, not a historical high there. Uh, you know, the historical high would be just above 24.88, probably 24.89 uh, would be that high historical marker. Uh, then we have the daily chart. This is looking very bullish, as you can see, basically all of the value areas, hot at value areas are above the previous day's value area. So those are uh, also points of control that the market is going to want to revisit because we're moving so fast above those and never really testing those the next day. So those uh, are going to act as support and resistance or uh, like I call them magnets. I think that the market is going to want to migrate down and retest those areas uh, you know, in the future. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen in the next couple of days, but it will sure enough want to go down there and test those sometime all right, and then let's get on to XOP with a couple of things that I've done today. Uh, with XOP, I'm working to try and get out of this trade in my IRA. Haven't been able to get out of it. Remember, it's a spread, so despite the fact that it's a bullish spread, I've gotten the directional uh, move in there. Not able to get out of that uh, right now because, you know, when you're doing a spread, those are going to take a little bit longer to decay and come into line than if we have on the naked spread. Uh, type of strategy and with this XOP I have on the September uh, 29 and a half 28 and a half put spread in there and 
originally sold it for a little bit better than 30 cents. It's pretty close to 50% of my max profit. I'm gonna squeeze a couple extra ticks out of that um, and probably wait until Monday as volatility will have a tendency to come in on those Mondays. Uh, but in my IRA, I was able to uh, get out of my XOP trade. And what happened there was um, with the XOP, I have been able to sell my September uh, 28 puts in there. And I originally sold those XOP 28 puts. Let me just double check on this. Uh, I wanna make sure I get this right with the XOP. Um, I originally sold those for 29 cents. So basically I was trying to pair apples to apples in a sense between uh, doing it as a spread and doing it as a naked strategy because um, I'm doing a webinar on Monday, or sorry, on Tuesday about how it, it may seem like you're increasing your risk, but at the end of the day, you're increasing your probability of success because for instance, this 28 puts that I got short sold for 29 cents was able to buy them back for nine cents today. So a 20 cent, uh, winner on that. Whereas with the XOP in the margin account, I sold those also for about 30 cents and I'm forced to stay in this a little bit longer because they've only decayed by about 50% there, uh, slightly higher than that. I'm not able to get that 50% of max profit where I was able to get well over uh, 50%, almost 60% of my max profit in the trading account. So sometimes when you're increasing your risk there, it's allowing you to increase your probability of success because if you're in the trade at a shorter duration and that, uh, decays faster, then you can get out and not have to worry about it. Just a couple of days of movement in your directional, uh, correct directional assumption allows you to get out. Whereas in the IRA, because you're doing it as a spread, it's going to decay a little bit slower. All right. So I'm going to talk about more about that on uh, Tuesday with the Festival of Traders. So check that out. Uh, you can check it out on our website, protraderstrategies.com search for Festival of Traders and hopefully you can join us. I've also sent out a couple of links to that on Facebook and, or sorry, on Twitter and on LinkedIn. So uh, you can follow me on either one of those. Uh, on to Lululemon, this is the trade I said I wasn't gonna do. I'm glad I didn't because I was kind of bearish on Lululemon. Uh, they did beat their uh, beat the street on their earnings. And they also came out that they were gonna start really ramping up menswear, which I think was something the uh, investors really want because that kind of spreads out some of your risk and increases your uh, user base in a sense. So uh, Lululemon outpacing the upside actually just outside of the market maker move earlier this morning, but I did not participate in that uh, because you know it has a tendency to be really volatile. Lowe's, this is a trade. You know, I started out with this. I'm in this trade at the uh, 72 and a half level. Really um, getting ready, I mean, I've been ready to pull the ripcord ever since it started moving against me almost immediately. I'm just looking at it right now, it's it's testing the probabilities, but I think that we're still gonna see this roll over. As you can see, it's still in a downtrend, uh, it's still creating lower lows, lower highs. So I think that this is about to roll over. So I'm holding on tight to this one right now, but just so you know, I have a very, uh, I have my hand on the ripcord ready to pull out of this one. So haven't done anything yet, but just wanted to keep you guys in on that one. Um, you know, the volatility's come out of it just like I wanted. It's uh, got the incorrect directional assumption, but um, if we can get roll over a little bit, I'm probably gonna try and get out of that for a scratch or maybe just a slight profit for the most part. Uh, but looking for it to roll over a little bit for me. That's about all I got for you guys today. Today's webinar is going to be on the long straddle, you guys, and it is really important to check this out because anybody can set up a long straddle, but the fact of the matter is there has to be uh, a lot of things going for you in this strategy in order for you to be profitable, and I'm going to help you set this up in the correct environment uh, so that it'll increase your probabilities of success with this one. If you set it up in the wrong type of environment, you're setting yourself up for uh, a disastrous a painful trade. All right, so go to protraderstrategies.com, sign up for that. If you can't take that, take it easy.